and start the presentation. Uh, so, I would like to um, talk about two topics today. The first one is workload identity on Google uh, Kubernetes engine. Uh, the second topic is uh, about workflow identity uh, federation. But let's start from uh, from the first one. So, what is the workload workload identity uh, in GCP? Of course, in official documentation, uh, this is the of course the recommended way to uh, work with Kubernetes engines uh, and accessing uh, Google Cloud services, and of course secure and manageable way uh, but let's see what was before so uh, the first case is we don't want to use it because it seems complicated for beginning or we've got some legacy code uh, or whatever so uh, we had um, we had uh, the diagram like uh, like i present that okay we've got uh, kubernetes uh, cluster deployed and we had only one let me highlight only one service account which was attached to each node so every request that was outgoing from google kubernetes cluster were out authorized authenticated as this service account node yeah so let's see how does it looks like and uh, how uh, how uh, the pods were authenticated what the pods uh, could do etc cetera, etc cetera. so uh, i deployed the cluster uh, earlier because deploying the cluster takes a lot of time it's from 5 to 15 minutes uh, it's standard cluster without uh, enabled any fancy features especially workflow identity let's see over here we can see that this is disabled and of course i got one more thing uh, over here it is artifactory registry because for this uh, presentation i create a really small application typescript that is using uh, that is using some <clears throat> uh, features like authenticating to to um, the services. Uh, so we've got this one. This is the private one. So we need uh, to have a special uh, role uh, to get this image. So let's start. The first thing to do is Let's get the credentials for this cluster. Okay. Uh, in this folder, uh, I've got uh, the namespace. Uh, let's see what is this. This is just simple definition: metadata, uh, name, workload. So apply this one and we've got the testing pod mm. which is the google um, google image with uh, sdk uh, so Apply uh, testing pod. Okay. Pods from namespace workload. I'm deploying everything in, in namespace workload. Work. Okay. It is pending. Uh, of course, we can use uh, some extra tooling. Uh, like I've got over here, K9S. 
where we can see uh, everything on our cluster. So we are looking out. Okay, let's see. Something is. Uh, let's see the logs. Unfortunately, it doesn't want to scale up. Okay, whatever. Um, let's kill this one and let's try to deploy uh, another one uh, prepared by my, uh, the application prepared by myself. Uh, so this is the some dummy application pulling the image and exposing uh, exposing this as a service on port 80. I hope that I get enough of resources. Okay. So the application is uh, starting. And that's... Uh, Okay, we're waiting for external address. We will change, I hope soon. Okay. So we've got the external address and let's uh, take a look briefly what this application does. Uh, So over here, it's really simple application. I am exposing the uh, posting uh, endpoint get. So the posting is inserting the document, get is getting the document. And of course I've got the who am I endpoint that try to identify ourselves. So, Let's go and see the ingress. Okay, so we've got the information in missing or insufficient permissions. Uh, and we are trying to get the information from, uh, from database and why it becomes that's uh, we need to take a look on privileges. And we can see that, okay, we are using this service account uh, as a background for every node. So uh, every service account built in or created in Kubernetes engine is using in the background this one. So to perform this, uh, uh, to perform this request, we need to uh, grant the new role. Uh, Firebase. Let me uh, take a look. What was the name of the role? Okay, so we need the viewer one. So I assign uh, the role and let's see. If this is the proper one. Let's let's make make it make it from common line. Uh, 
and let's change the service account name. Let's try again. Uh, changing the role takes time a little bit. Maybe I'll try to kill this boat. Okay, so something is not working correctly as on presentation usually. So let's have, let's try to put some data. Maybe it's because the database is completely empty. Uh, this is the role uh, that allows us to post the data. Uh, to database. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, I retrieve uh, the press request. So this is the empty one. Yeah. So not no data in sight. And let's go over here. Uh, I'm using the Visual Studio Code uh, REST extension. So this is the API, uh, the IP address. Uh, so we can try to put data, of course. The permissions were not retrieved yet. So let's try to, who am I? Okay. Uh, so I'm now I'm getting the information what service account is assigned to this one. Let's see the audi audience ID and let's go back over here to see if those service accounts ID matches to, to this one. Yeah, as you can see, okay, this number and this number, uh, sorry. Um, and this number are the same. So we are using in the background, just Kubernetes uh, default account. Okay, now I put some data and it is working. So uh, that's the, the way we are, uh, we can do. So going back to the demo. So we can use the default compute engine service account, with, which is strongly not recommended or dedicated one. It, it's a little bit better. Of course, we've got simple identity access management, uh, just only one service account. Uh, and uh, for, for sm really small uh, clusters and with, uh, let's say one task cluster, I think that this is fine. We don't have to use a uh, more complex or complicated method. Just one service account, one responsibility, that's okay. And uh, when we are deploying, developing the application and suddenly we are using uh, a lot of uh, Google APIs, uh, a lot of Google services and uh, uh, each pod, let's say in, uh, in uh, microservices architecture, each pod is responsible for different set of uh, services. We are doing something like over-provisioning uh, 
uh, over provisioning uh, the, the permissions, yeah. So there is one service account in God mode. So literally you can do anything with other related services, yeah. So it's not so, it's not very good. Uh, it's violate least privileges, privilege uh, principle. So we can of course fix those issues like we don't want to use workload identity. Let's just generate the service account keys, service account, and then generate service account keys and uh, move uh, those keys inside the Kubernetes. But of course, there is a question with the service accounts uh, because in Google, when you generate the key, uh, it's uh, it have unlimited. Uh, Time period, yeah. It's not like Azure that you've got 90 days uh, and after those days, uh, the key will expire. Now in Google, if you generate the key, you are responsible for key, you are responsible for rotating this key and revoking. Yeah? It means that someone or uh, need to uh, rotate it. So to, to rotate it, uh, the person need to download the key and, and upload the key to go Kubernetes or uh, build some uh, simple uh, automatization, how to do this. So a lot of efforts. If we think that this is too risky, then we should use workflow identity. Yeah. And work work workflow identity allows us to, uh, as you can see on the screen, we've got the service account dedicated like DB writer. And uh, we can annotate the service account as, okay, in Kubernetes, it, uh, it is called DB writer, but uh, it refers to service account Firestore writer. Yeah. Uh, and uh, after assigning some permissions, uh, we are actually are able to use those, uh, this account, yeah. So another demo. And for this demo, I let's do this. And create I created the other uh, cluster, DevOps workload. And here the configuration is almost the same, except we enabled workload identity. And we create the workflow identity fixed uh, pool. Yeah, that's the one of the issue that uh, I will tell you uh, tell you about uh, a little bit later. That we have to create the fixed uh, workflow identity pool, or actually Google is doing it for us. Yeah. Uh, so nothing fancy here. Uh, let's log into the cluster. And I got the same. Mm -hmm. Let's do the same. Cube, CTL. Mm -hmm. Let's see the default deployment. No, oh, sorry. I need to deploy the uh, workspace first. Uh, namespace. Okay, so namespace is deployed. Let's see the default service account. Um, okay, this is running. The application is listening, uh, port 300. Uh, let's see the service API, QPCTM. Um, 
Okay, so we got the external address. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code. And we've got error. Yeah, we are trying to get uh, data directly for, from Firestore with default service account. And over here, the default service account, as we didn't configure, we just enable workflow identity but didn't configure it. Uh, so our, our default service account is this one. Yeah, I'm using this one to, to get the information. And let's see, who am I? I've got just a token, yeah. So it's a token uh, from the service account. Uh, so, Let's create the oh, sorry. Uh, let's create the uh, deployment reader. Yeah, kubectl apply. Reader. Let's see what what will happen. Okay, we've got this reader which don't want to deploy. Describe. It doesn't have any uh, more additional uh, data, but uh, let's see. Deployment reader. Yeah, so I'm pointing here that I'm using a specific service account. Yeah, and I didn't deploy it, deploy them yet. Kubectl. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I need to deploy those two service accounts, and uh, those service accounts must be annotated with this specific annotation and uh, the name of the service account we want to bind. So let's do this. Let's see over here. Let's delete this one and let's apply once again. Okay. It started working and the logs. Okay, it's exposed. And this is the IP. So let's change this one and 
I should have an error. So when I'm trying to uh, get data, actually something is going not okay. And over here, I've got the information directly from the pod that unable to uh, retrieve this, uh, this service and we are using service account default, yeah? For now. It's because uh, we need to assign from uh, I am. Uh, we need to assign the uh, proper the proper rights. Uh, yeah, like over here, we've got the service account. The, the service account have, need to have uh, the viewer role, and currently it doesn't. And uh, the other thing is we need to create the, uh, add the special IAM binding policy to specific service account that allow us uh, to work as uh, identity user, yeah? So we are assigning the project ID, SBC. This from, this is a, a fixed poll that uh, Kubernetes create when we enabled uh, workload identity. And over here uh, is the namespace and the user in the namespace, yeah? And now we should have permission to, uh, let's kill this code, permission to, uh, act as this service account. Okay, application is working. Go back to the rest. Okay, it doesn't work yet, it doesn't propagate. The same issue. Let's see what is going on in the deployment and let's see the definition of YAML file. Such a visit count, DB reader. Let's see the service count. Uh, reader if it is properly assigned. Okay, we've got the annotation and let's see the service account. Permissions. Okay, we've got the reader writer. And the reader should have yeah, this permission. Um, so let's try again. As usual, not working as. Sometimes it takes time to propagate all permissions.
So meanwhile, I will configure the result service accounts uh, and And let's assign the writer emissions. So maybe any questions so far? No. Sorry. Mm, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, hi. Uh, I have a common question regarding workload identity. Um, how many workload identity accounts do you usually create in projects? Because it's always a challenge to create uh, one single workload identity service account for all workloads in the cluster. Or for example, create uh, uh, the ones for, for, for each, uh, each workload. It depends, but uh, I usually met the uh situation that each workload, each deployment has own uh, account, yeah, specific to, to the task that is responsible for. Mm -hmm. I just want to mention that uh, we need to keep in mind that there is a limit with the service account accounts. As I remember, it's 100 <clears throat> service accounts per GCP project. For example, if you, if you have really too many uh, microservices running in the same cluster, it will have some kind of pain. Yeah, and this also uh, this uh, this also uh, have the limitation about the three thousand Kubernetes service account. Yeah, and mm -hmm. there is a limit with two hundred connection uh, from workload identity, let's say, to Google uh, Kubernetes engine metadata server. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something like this. OK, so uh, uh, the, prim the primary goal is to run each uh, microservice with a server, uh, separate uh, workload identity, let's say, right? Yeah, yeah. OK, thanks. OK, and I think that. Uh, I made a mistake during the creation of uh, of the cluster. Yeah. Uh, let me show you where I did mistake. We've got something like uh, cluster basics. It's okay. Default poll. We've got the nodes. Uh, networking security. Uh, I've got the, my own service account over here. And uh, there is something like scope. I can't find it here. I'm hardly using uh, this one. But yeah, uh, you also got the scope of the uh, uh, of your cluster, yeah. So you can use the uh, uh, allow access to all GCP service or just a few of them, yeah. Uh, so this is uh, this is where I make a mistake, and I'm not allowing from uh, cluster perspective to uh, connect to those one. Yeah, it, it was on security. 
Okay, over here, access scope, yeah. I'm using the default access scope, but we should use uh, to access the Firestore, uh, Firebase, uh, this one, yeah, because uh, it, it's not in default scope. Yeah, but anyway, uh, we can go over here and try to uh, log in. Uh, and I got here the request for metadata. It is in, in default one. So unfortunately, it didn't went well uh, because uh, the pod is working uh, with the specific service account, but uh, from a cluster perspective, we are not allowed to communicate with uh, with this one. Yeah, uh, uh, this uh, specific service I wanted to show you. Uh, let's see uh, the testing pod. Starting pulling image. So mm, the error was not uh, with the cluster itself. It's just with the when you create a node pool, you you can just simply recreate the node pool to assign new scopes. Yeah, yeah but recreating the node pool takes uh, five to ten minutes. Yeah, right. So that was the issue. Okay. So I'm using the default one and the default one doesn't have any uh, any service account bind it. Um, so let's assign. Um, let's assign over here the specific service account link writer. Yeah, so you can see that, okay, I changed the service account and I'm asking uh, GTE metadata server, uh, what is the service default service account for this pod? And as turn back, we've got the specific service account, which I pick up. So uh, this is Firestore, uh, SVC Firestore writer. And when we go to the definition of the this uh, pod, I should have somewhere here uh, the service account. Yeah, over here, DB writer. Uh, and when we go to service accounts and see the service account of writer, we can see that okay, this annotation binding to the specific uh, Google service account, yeah? So 
we can quite easily, but we have to remember to pick up the proper scope. Uh, uh, we can easily bind the, those two service accounts, yeah. Uh, and let's continue with presentation. Of course, we need to be aware that uh, when we create more than one cluster uh, in the same uh, project, uh, we, we can uh, use only one workload identity pool yeah? uh, for GKE cluster. It means that when we create some account, let's say its name backend, uh, and the uh, in namespace backend and the service account will be named back and uh, it refers to Google service account, yeah? And we, when we create another cluster with the same namespace and the same uh, inside uh, Kubernetes service account, it will refer to the same service account. So uh, those namespaces and uh, service accounts are shared yeah, in the cluster uh, between uh, between clusters, yeah. And of course, I highlight some uh, limitations. The more limitations is are in uh, official uh, Google documentation, like uh, as I mentioned that okay, uh, we've got the fi fixed workload identity pool. It means that each cluster uh, with the same namespace and serve same service account will refer to the same uh, Google service account, yeah? And uh, as you can see that uh, when we don't use uh, workload identity, we are using compute uh, metadata server uh, that comes from uh, compute engine. When we create or enable workload identity, uh, we are actually, let me, um, let me show you, get pods on namespaces. The Google is creating additional um, pods, which also take uh, some resources from our cluster. It is GKE metadata server, and this is the, uh, uh, node set, it means that on each node pool, uh, we, uh, the pod will be placed. And when we are calling this local address, we are actually calling, being redirected to, to this server, yeah. So that's why uh, we've got a connection limit uh, for 2000, uh, 200 uh, at once. And also uh, sometimes we can uh, get fails of the, uh, uh, the pod might fail because uh, they are not um, able to, to retrieve uh, secrets, yeah. And this is the part about the Kubernetes. Any questions? Let's see the time. How fast I need to move. Okay, so next question is something like workload identity federation. It's uh, uh, it's not uh, combined with uh, uh, Kubernetes engine. It's uh, ab more about how to uh, deal with service accounts outside the Google. Yeah. As you can see, the unifying federation, uh, we can run permission uh, and without the service account key, yeah. And uh, why the service account is not the best option? The options are similar in, in uh, we spoke in Kubernetes engine, but there comes the, the questions, who will rotate, who will responsible, uh, for it, who will uh, validate uh, if the service account uh, should should be deleted or not? Uh, who got those keys? Yeah, because yeah, someone can generate the service account key and let's say change the job, and this person still will have 
those keys, valid keys, and we'll be able to perform some actions on the project uh, or on the uh, organization. Yeah. Uh, did you uh, have the chance to play with it? Does anybody using uh, this one? Okay, so let's assume that we've got Azure DevOps. Uh, and Azure DevOps has um, not service account, but service principal in uh, Azure Cloud. And uh, Azure DevOps wants to uh, deploy something on Google Cloud. Yeah, the normal procedure would like would be okay. Generate service account, generate the key, get the key, put into uh, some kind of secrets uh, in Azure DevOps. Yeah, but workflow uh, workload identity federations allow us to do something like okay, we've got the workload pipeline. pipeline yeah, and external ID identity provider. So workload is Azure DevOps in our case, or will be external identity provider, it's Azure Cloud. And workload identity uh, is trying to uh, get the access token and got the token and get, get this token and is calling to something like secure token service on Google site. It's a, a special service that uh, is uh, trying to, I don't, some kind of authenticate or prove that this token really belongs to this identity provider. Yeah. So secure uh, STS got the token and calling to external ID provider with the question: Is this token real? Is valid? Yeah. So after uh, STS goes, uh, get the information that, okay, it's, uh, it's my token, it's valid. The workload pipeline got, uh, got so-called STS token, yeah? So with this token, uh, we can't do uh, anything except one thing. We can call to identity access management credentials service and ask for token of the service account that we previously configured to, to be able to do, yeah. Uh, so let's see how does it looks like. Let's close this one and over here. Over here, I got something. Uh, I created um, some test application in uh, Azure. Uh, I've got the application ID, object ID. Yeah. And what else I do before? this meeting. I create the service connection. Where is service connection? Okay. I've got the service connections that grant me uh, access from Azure DevOps to this application. Yeah, so I can use it uh, in the pipeline. Uh, and let's go to the Google console. Um, and service accounts. So I doesn't have any workflow identity tools and I doesn't have any uh, service accounts bind to there, there. So the first thing we need to do after enable, enabling API is 
Let's create Azure DevOps poll. Yeah. In global location, some description, display name. Okay. Let's see. We've got it. And now we have to create uh, the provider, uh, not this one. And we can see that, okay, I've got something like this or this, and I have no idea uh, what what is this, yeah? To see, I've got Azure login service principle with the password, of course, previously created. Okay, and let's see the token. Here's the token and Let's decode this token. Oh, sorry. Let's transfer it to the JSON, but without those nasty features. Okay, and let's see the command. So I'm creating uh, the identity pool provider from Azure, and I have to put some issuer. And as you can see, this issuer is TID or Where is it? Yeah. Uh, tenant ID, yeah. So let me go here. We've got tenant ID. Yeah, so the first thing we need to get uh, the tenant ID. Uh, the next one is something like this. App ID. So we just copy uh, the application ID from Azure. Yeah. And now let's create this one. Yeah. So let's go to uh, Google. The full configuration. We've got our app test app, uh, provider. And as you can see, the issuer, the audience. I put the second audience here uh, because I'm calling Google uh, from Azure DevOps. Yeah. And, uh, and also locally. So this is the, the second trusted audience from here. Yeah. And of course, I'm binding the Google subject to assertion subject, uh, which is this one. Yeah. So I'm binding the properties from uh, JWT token and also the object ID and subject ID, as you can see, yeah. So, okay, 
more or less, I uh, configured workload identity pool in a Google. But now I need to have, I need to assign some service account to it, yeah? So the first thing, let's create the service account on Google site. And let's add uh, permission to the service account as Google storage object admin that is able to create the buckets. Yeah. And manipulate object and create the bucket. Yeah. And the last thing is I need to assign the uh, some special permission to, uh, to Google. Uh, I created this service account and I need to grant workload identity user. Yeah, it the same, it, this is the same uh, role that we used uh, on GKE uh, to uh, uh, cooperate uh, uh, Kubernetes service account with Google service account, but the member is slightly different. Uh, the pattern of the member is over here, I put uh, the project ID, the name, the name is yeah. uh, and subject, this one, yeah. So let's see, um, the subject, it's uh, object ID. The object ID is unique across the all Azure as I uh, remember, so let's assign. Okay, let's go back here. And as you can see, we've got connected service account, yeah? So this, uh, Workload identity pool is connected with this account. And let's see this account once again. Permissions. Yeah, so this principle is allowed to use to use it. Uh, so let's go to the rest um, let me get the subject token so let's try to connect uh, to the google with uh, an impersonate impersonate uh, as the service account yeah so we we need to have the subject token it's token from azure service account, we want to get the uh, access token and the audience. Uh, uh, the pattern is slightly the same. Um, so Azure DevOps pool. And uh, we need to put the provider. Yeah. Okay, so. I got the access token from uh, Azure and put the this token to STS. And as return, I got the access token from Google STS. But with this token, I can't do anything except, as you can see here, uh, I can generate the access token for the specific service account, yeah, for this one. Okay, I got it, yeah. And let's see if it is working. Okay, I'm calling the Google APIs uh, token info and got the uh, return that, okay. Let's see the audience, the number of service account. And 
Let's see the details. Okay, I'm logged in as this service account, yeah. And let's see. So basically, we, uh, we authenticate to Google without any piece of Google service account, yeah. Uh, not the service account, but any password, service account key or something like this, yeah. Uh, for the testing purposes, I create, created this uh, pipeline and I'm doing exactly the same. So uh, it's okay or should I uh, make the letters bigger? No, it's fine. Okay, so I'm using the inline script uh, with curl. So showing the service account key, getting the subject uh, token, calling uh, to STS, calling to uh, service account uh, generate access token and set this as var global variable as Google OAuth access token. Yeah, and this one is needed to uh, for Terraform uh, to use the specific token. Yeah. So let's see how long it takes because uh, this is the free uh, account in Azure DevOps. But in this case, uh, in this case, I uh, create the pipeline and uh, run the pipeline before. <laughs> okay, so logging to Azure. Okay, that's why. Uh, I got this access uh, token. Let's see. Permissions. Storage. Okay, I think uh, I think that I'm missing some permissions. But let's see the previous one. It was uh, run yesterday. Yeah, nothing has changed because we are much over uh, time, and it is working in pipeline. Yeah, so I created this uh, storage bucket. Okay, any questions so far? Uh, I have a question. Regards, mm -hmm. uh, oh, have you some uh, real experience when we need uh, to make this mix of uh, well, uh, identity uh, from Azure and uh, backend from G Cloud? It is often uh, happen. Uh, I we uh, in my previous job we were using it uh, a lot, yeah, because we got the, the really risk. Um, um, restrict policy about those service account and we were forced to uh, uh, to do uh, to uh, change the service account key uh, every two weeks uh, so we as Google give us this kind of uh, opportunity just we switched to this one yeah so it it is working so, till now as I believe So thank you, thank you. Okay. Do we have other questions? Yeah. Um, do we have some Confluence page where all those uh, steps are described how to do? Maybe instruction videos, Terraform examples? Mm -hmm. Because it's really common, uh, common sense to keep everything in one place uh, rather than just 
recording a video of, of, of this feature because it's I think it's very useful feature for any key for any project. I got it on big bucket over here. When I create the examples, like as you can see, the REST example, Azure DevOps pipeline, uh, the Bash example, uh, and also I create the .NET token exchange, Golang, Python. Maybe we take a look on the Python. Uh, where I basically create a class, uh, Azure Google Token, and you just call the, this class and get Google credentials. And then you've got the, uh, everything to you need. Yeah. As unified. And I don't know how to share with you with this. So also, if you can share it, uh, it you can indicate it on a blog post, which you will create at the okay. presentation, if it's okay, okay for you. Yeah, it's, it's fine for me. Uh, so briefly, uh, example with Azure Cloud. As you can see, this image is similar than I show you during the presentation. How to log in. So with examples. Of course, uh, uh, there is one disadvantage of using this one. Uh, when when we are using in pipelines or etc., it's it's fine because you are requesting each time uh, for the new token. But uh, when we are uh, building the software, we need to uh, pay attention on uh, access token uh, expiration period because this token is valid only for for one hour and after one hour you need to uh, re-ask for the tokens to so, uh, do the full uh, scope and this is very um, hmm. developers doesn't like it much especially when they got code built and suddenly Okay, you are changing the way of uh, authenticating to, to Google. Yeah. Um, thanks, Janusz. Do we have uh, other questions? Or we can end our meeting. I think we can uh, thank you, Janusz, for your performance. Yeah. It was really sorry, interesting. So, sorry for uh, uh, live coding uh, wasn't as good enough I, as I thought. I think it was good. <laughs> thank you, Janusz. Uh, uh, yes, uh, thank you all for attending our meeting. I hope it was uh, helpful for all of you. I uh, hope to see you on other our events and wishing a great weekend ahead. Thank you. Thanks. See you.